All right, let's get started. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, I think that they've turned down the temperature in here to keep everyone awake after day to night out. Uh, so thanks for braving the cold and the hangover to be here. My name is Rafi Zelikowski, and growing up, I always wanted to be an artist. So I came from a family of artists. My dad was a photographer, my mom a painter, and my sister one of those uh, really obnoxious people that can pretty much do anything. Unfortunately, I learned at a young age that I am just not naturally gifted uh, when it comes to art. And I tried everything. I tried uh, photography, painting, I tried ceramics. Uh, I even tried bookmaking, which is apparently also a real art. Um, I also wasn't good at it, though. And it wasn't until about 20 years later when I found Tableau that I felt like I finally found my creative medium. Finally, I felt like I could do, uh, I could express my creativity with something that I could do, which was analyze data. And now the combination of design and analytics is a real passion of mine. I hope that after today's session, you leave feeling that same sense of joy that I felt when I first found out I could drag a floating container into a dashboard. And take it from me, you don't need to be naturally gifted to be able to create a stunning corporate standard for your organization. As you can see, I love to help people see and understand their data. So in today's session, I want you to learn about how to create a corporate standard for your organization so that you can um, leave the session today and be able to figure out how to make the dashboards that you create every day um, be adopted better in your organization and more trusted. So the session's gonna have three main parts. Uh, in the first, we're gonna learn how to take uh, a dashboard and create a corporate standard quickly and easily in Tableau Desktop. Next, we're gonna learn how to make this repeatable. So how can we make sure that anyone in our organization is able to adhere and follow to the same standard? And finally, as I just mentioned, we're gonna learn about adoption. So how can we make sure that uh, everything that we create in our corporate standard uh, is then picked up by the rest of our organization. So in addition to uh, visualizing data and analyzing data, another passion of mine uh, is service. So how many of you know what Movember is? Yes, oh my god, that's great, almost everyone. Um, I do see a few mustaches in the room, so well done for those of you that are, that are participating. Um, so for those of you that don't know, So for those of you that, sorry, for those of you that don't know, uh, Movember is actually a global men's health charity, and uh, they raise money through a variety of means. Um, the most kind of infamous is that they ask men around the world to grow mustaches in the month of November to start a conversation about men's health and, of course, raise funds. So I have a personal connection to Movember uh, because my husband actually works there. And a couple years ago, he was asked to run a project through one of their partners, which is called the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. Now, the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride is not related to the month of November where you grow mustaches. It's actually an annual motorcycle race that takes place in September every year in hundreds of cities around the world. And last year, they actually raised almost $6 million in a single day. When he took on the project, Gaz was told that he had to um, see how they could improve the project, how they could improve fundraising, and see um, how they could perform better in different cities. And of course, totally of his own free will, he decided that Tableau would be the best way to do this. Um, so after a few painful days uh, of me teaching him how to use Tableau, I don't know if anyone's ever had to teach a spouse um, Tableau, it's, it's a little tricky. Um, he did come up with his first ever dashboard, and the dashboard that he created uh, was great. It answered all of his business questions. He was able to see quickly, you know, where did they raise the most funds, in which cities and countries around the world, where did they have the biggest races versus um, which cities raised the most money. So I think that this was a great start with Tableau, but when I look at this dashboard, the first thing that I ask myself is what is the identity of this dashboard? Now that question might not be important to the everyday desktop user, someone who's just trying to get a quick answer of their data. But I hope that that question is important to everyone here. And it's definitely important to both the Movember Foundation and DGR, because their ability to be recognized, their ability to have a brand, is also how they raise money. 
So I took this same dashboard uh, that Gaz had made, and I gave it a little bit of a makeover. And this is work, what we're going to use in today's session to discuss how we can start creating our corporate standard. What's important here is that it's not just about taking a dashboard that uses defaults and making it look pretty. It's about um, inspiring confidence in our users that they're using a dashboard and they're looking at analytics that they can trust, that it's part of their organization um, and it's approved content. There's three things that I want you to keep in mind when we're creating our corporate standard. The first is your use of text. Now, this isn't just using custom fonts, although I definitely recommend doing that. But it's also thinking about how text is part of the identity of your organization, and also how text can add value. So if I think about the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride, and to give you a little bit more context, um, the ride is all about using uh, classic motorbikes, and they ask everyone to come dressed in what they call dapper wear. So think like tweed blazers um, and things like that, pretty much what you can see in the picture. So they have a really classic feel uh, to their brand, but they've actually used a really modern text in conjunction with that to elevate what their organization does. In addition, in the dashboard that I've made, a few things that you might notice is the use of text is not just about uh, titles, subtitles, and the kind of font that you're using, but how can you add um, information that's going to reduce the amount of time it takes your audience to understand the analytics? How can you guide them towards um, your story and make it easier for them to interact with your branded dashboard. The second theme was color. And again, one of the important elements of this is using a color that relates to your organization. So a lot of you might work for companies that already have defined color palettes. Um, in this case, DGR did not have a defined color palette. Um, but that shouldn't stop you from trying to find a way to use color to mimic your brand's identity. So in this case, I took a picture from their website. It's a map that they didn't use Tableau to make, unfortunately. Um, but I picked up the colors from that to start to define how I would look at the color scheme for their organization. Now, a question that I get a lot is, what if my organization has really bright colors? Should I be making you know, a bright red dashboard with uh, all my bars colored blue or, or primary yellow? Um, and one piece of advice that I would give for that is that you should use those bold colors, but in a way that's accenting your analytics rather than as the primary element. So in this example of a nameless organization, I used kind of a gray uh, and white color scheme, um, something really neutral and easy to understand. And then I used the colors as accents that would then make it easy to identify um, both the organization that we're working with, but also the data that we're looking at. So for example, using that red, um, to signify something that's negative in value or something that we should draw attention to, and using the rest of the primary colors to signify categories that we can then track through the rest of the dashboard. The third element is consistency. And something that I see a lot with organizations that are trying to do this for the first time is the idea or the thought that all of our reports or all of our dashboards need to look exactly the same. And this is not what, the what this session is about. Um, so consistency is all about getting that look and feel um, that gives you the sense that you're looking at something that's a trusted piece of content, but it doesn't mean creating 50 or 100 or 1,000 identical reports. One thing I want to point out here when we talk about design is that part of our design choices when it comes to making dashboards is designing for accessibility. So there are sessions that have been on throughout the conference um, in regards to this topic, and you can definitely read more about it online. Um, but you'll see that I really like the rules of three, so I couldn't help myself in adding this here. Um, that when you look at your dashboards and you're thinking about designing for accessibility, um, you should always remember these three things, which are to make it operable, perceivable, and understandable. So making sure that everyone in your organization um, of different abilities is able to use your dashboard, that it's perceivable, so not just thinking about you know, making sure you're using colorblind palettes, but making sure you're using colors that have a high enough contrast, text that's big enough to read, um, and understandable. So you saw that example of the use of text to give more information about what we're seeing. Uh, you know, a dashboard doesn't need to just be images. You also need to think about making sure that people are going to be able to understand your analytics. With that being said, I have a caveat for this session, which is that we're operating under the assumption that you've already designed something that's analytically sound um, before we design and format it. So for example, the dashboard that I'm going to uh, be using from Gaz 
is something that he already was able to create something that was efficient analytically and answered his business questions. So you never want to sacrifice efficient analytics in favor of something that looks good. All right, so let's hop into our first section, which was designing our standard in Tableau Desktop. And I have three main tips that I want you to think about. The first is begin at the end. So this is something that I'm definitely guilty of, but if you start formatting and creating your standard as you're building your analytics, you will end up spending and wasting a lot of time. So my first piece of advice is always start your formatting at the very end of your analytics. Next is to keep it simple. So we're going to see how we can think about uh, the three things that I just mentioned with uh, text, color, and consistency, but also applying simplicity to our dashboards uh, so that we're not cluttering up our message. And finally, format to, from highest to lowest, which is my tip for how to format the most efficiently. Uh, and now I'm going to hop into Tableau Desktop, and we're going to look at these all together. Great, so what I have here is the dashboard that Gaz made in Tableau Desktop. And the very first thing that I like to do, if you remember what I said, my uh, favorite thing that I first learned about formatting in Tableau was bringing in a floating image into a dashboard. So I like to do this first when I'm uh, formatting a dashboard and trying to give it a branded look and feel because it helps remind me what my end goal is. So I'm just going to hold my Shift key down and drag in an image object and choose actually both the DGR logo and the Movember logo. Okay, and for now, you don't need to worry about where these are going to go in the dashboard. Um, one of the last things we're going to do is look at actually the layout of the dashboard. So I like to just throw them into the middle and then worry about where they go later so I don't have to move things around um, a lot. I think it's this one. Great. So when I say format from highest to lowest, if there's one thing that you have to take away from this session, it's that when you start your formatting, if you go up to the Format menu on Tableau Desktop, you literally just work your way down from the top to bottom. And this is going to reduce the number of steps that you have to do in formatting and make sure that you're um, kind of doing things once and it's applying to as much content as possible. So first I'm going to format my dashboard, which is the top option. And this pulls up a menu on the left where we can look at the font and the shading of our dashboard. So here I'm going to pick up a background color. Again, like the example uh, with that unnamed company, you don't have to have you know, a different colored background. You can keep it white and keep it simple. In this case, uh, I'm going to change the background to gray. One thing that I would say as a, as a tip if you don't have saved colors is to uh, use the eyedropper to pick up a color that's maybe in the logo or image that you brought in to quickly match that uh, within your dashboard. Since I already have it here, I'm just going to make my background gray. And now I'm going to change my title. So um, DGR actually does have a custom font that they use. So I'll change my font here. And also change my worksheet titles. So as I do this, all of the titles in my dashboard are updating, which means that I don't have to then double click on every single worksheet title and change the font. I can just do it once in the dashboard, and it's going to apply to everything. Next up, going highest to lowest, is formatting my workbook. So this has some additional text and line design options. So again, I'll just zoom in here. And I'm going to change the font of my worksheets to a similar font within the font family, um, but something a bit different. So that's going to give me uh, a bit of that context between the text, sorry, contrast between the text in my worksheets and the text in my titles. And I'm also going to remove some of the lines here. This just gives me a cleaner look and feel uh, that I think matches the DGR brand. So I'll go ahead and take off my grid lines and then also my axis rulers. Great. So if I just zoom back out here and go to our formatting menu, next down we have five different options. So font, alignment, shading, borders, and lines. Now these five options relate to all of the formatting that you can do on a specific worksheet. So if I select my worksheet down here and go back up, those options are now available. And when I select shading, for example, we see those same five options repeated 
on the top of our formatting bar. So what's really important here is to try and apply as much formatting to your worksheet as you can by using this side menu. So for example, here I'm going to change just my background um, to match the background of my dashboard. And I'm going to remove a few more of my dividers. There's a lot more that you can do with formatting here in terms of changing the um, font of your headers and of your axes of formatting your numbers. But the reason that we want to try and do as much as we can from the actual side pane is that we can then take advantage of something that Tableau has, which is called copy and paste formatting. How many of you have used this before? Awesome. This is great. OK. Um, it, if you haven't, it's going to save your life, basically. So um, now that I've formatted one of my worksheets, all I have to do is right click on it and say copy formatting. And when I navigate to a different sheet, and right click and say paste formatting, it's going to pick up all of those options that we specified in the formatting menu and apply them to a different worksheet. So now instead of having to reselect all of those options, I can just go um, to all my different worksheets and copy and paste the formatting. So when we're working from top to bottom, the last thing that we're, that we're going to want to do is format anything that happens on an individual worksheet that's typically controlled by our marks card. And this is because these are the formatting options that you can't apply to multiple worksheets. It has to be done one worksheet at a time. So the reason we leave it last is that if we first control as much as we can using the side menu, we don't then have to repeat these actions on the individual worksheet. So with maps, uh, there's one thing that I like to add that just makes it a little bit more branded, which is to go into my map layers and uncheck my base layer. This means that the rest of the map will blend in with the background of my dashboard. And then I might change the uh, color. Actually, first I'm going to make this into an area map so it's a bit easier to see. And then I want to use some of those custom colors that I've already defined for the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. So here I have a color palette that I've already saved with all my DGR colors. I've actually already assigned them to my field here. So I'll just uh, drag that in, and now I have my defined colors. I'm going to do the same in two of my bar charts so that we can then be able to see which region each of these cities uh, have their rides in. And if I go back to my dashboard, we can already see uh, how much uh, it's changed, right? So in just a few minutes, we were already giving it more of a branded feel. In terms of the kind of KPI figures we have on the left here, I've actually already made ones that have um, kind of shapes that relate to the DGR brand. So I'm going to remove the ones that I have here. And a tip that I have is if you've placed items into a layout container, it's really easy to add them and remove them from a dashboard. So I'll just double click. Let me do that on Zoom so you can see. Double click on the gray bar that I have here at the top. And then it's going to select my entire layout container for these objects. And all I have to do is click and remove them from my dashboard. To bring in my new items, I'm going to add another layout container just to my right, and then drop in my number of riders, number of rides, and amount raised. So this is all the same data that we saw from those three sheets, um, but just formatted a bit differently. So again, just move these over for now so I can see. And the last thing we want to do is now look at the layout of our dashboard and add any interactivity or text that we need to um, make it a bit more clear. So first thing I see is that we have a lot of these kind of filters and legends on the right-hand side. So let's see if we can apply that principle of keeping it simple by removing some of these that aren't necessary and making more room on the dashboard. So all of these ones that have the region specified by color aren't really necessary to keep on as legends um, because we already can tell that one color represents a certain region geographically by looking at the map. I also don't need this one or the size because we have that on text. One of my um, additional elements here is a filter for the number of members. So this says how many people participated in the ride. And I know that applies to my map, so I'm just going to go ahead and move it um, to be kind of near my map so it's easier to understand which sheet it's applying to. And the last one I have is a filter for my different regions. So rather than have a quick filter here on the right that takes up room, I'm just going to use my map as a filter so that now I can get rid of this entire container and have a lot more space on my dashboard. So now that I have this worksheet um, operating as a filter, 
I need to let my users know how they can interact with the dashboard, because many people will have never used Tableau before, or they won't know that they can um, click on something and that it can interact. So I'm going to go in and add a subtitle here, and I'll make sure it's in my subtitle font, and I'll just say select a country to filter. And then the last thing I'm going to do is also adjust my title. So I want my title to give a bit more context into how this dashboard is supposed to be understood. So if I right click on it, I'm just going to say uh, something along the lines of how much money did we raise in 2018. And for this specific dashboard, I really want to make use of the fact that the logos for both these organizations are actually really uh, text-based, and they have really strong uh, custom fonts that they're using. So instead of actually typing these out here and then having the logos somewhere else on the side, which just adds more noise, I'm going to use the logos as part of my font, sorry, as part of my title. So I'll just move these a bit further down. And now I can pick up those floating images and kind of add them to the top of my dashboard so that they also are part of my title. OK, I'm not going to spend half an hour on centering, because we'll be here all day if I do that. So in just 10 minutes, more or less, we were able to take a dashboard that used all of Tableau's uh, defaults and create something that had a corporate brand. So let's go back to our presentation. And one thing I want to mention here, I'm not going to show how it's done, um, but is to think about how your users are going to actually be consuming the dashboards that you make. So luckily in Tableau over the years, we've gotten a lot better at um, giving you the option to reformat your dashboard for different devices. And now with Device Designer, all you have to do is click on the Device Designer, and you can see um, and get a preview of what your dashboard is going to look like, whether it's on a phone or a tablet. So I highly encourage you to do this and just make sure that your brand still looks the way you want it to look when users might be accessing it on a different device. So we've made a beautiful dashboard that has our branded look and feel. How do we make sure that everyone in our organization can use this? There's three things that I want to talk about, and two of them we've already seen. The first is our use of custom colors. The second, our use of custom fonts. And the third will be, how can we make something that acts as a template or a style guide from what we've already done with our dashboard? So we saw how we were able to use um, a custom color palette that I made for the Distinguished Gentleman Ride, or in this case, for Movember. To do that, it's really simple to create these color palettes by using the hex code of a color. And there's a lot of free tools online that you can get to determine what the individual color codes are. And then you add them to a file in your Tableau repository called Preferences. And that means that same color palette can be used across all of your workbooks. So you won't need to remember this every time you make a new dashboard. Um, it's saved to the repository where Tableau accesses all of that information. Second is font. So we saw that we used custom fonts for DGR. Um, but I have a little bit of a warning here when it comes to custom fonts. And it's something that I think a lot of you might already be thinking about, which is if you're using Tableau Server, you want to make sure that if you're using a custom font, it's also installed on the machine where your Tableau Server is installed. It's also important, unless you're using something we call server-side rendering, to make sure that that font is also installed on all of the client machines that are accessing your workbooks. Now, if you're creating something for uh, internal use, it's highly likely that all of the computers at your organization will already have your organization's custom font on it. But if you are creating something for external use, or if you're using Tableau Online, for example, you might want to think about using a font that mimics the look and feel of your organization's font, um, but is something that is uh, more readily accessible on the web. And lastly, we saw that I was able to use um, images and icons rather than highly customized fonts, um, because this is something that will be able to be rendered anywhere without having to have that font uh, located on a machine. So that's one way to still get your branded look and feel in there without having to use a custom font. All right, so let's go back and see how we can quickly make a style guide or a template so that anyone can use our corporate standard that we've designed. Cool. 
So I think the best way to start when you're creating your template or your style guide is from a dashboard that you've already made. So I'm going to take this one that we've just done on our DGR dashboard, and I'm going to duplicate the dashboard here. And now I can start to replace some of the elements in the dashboard with placeholders that new users um, can take and understand where they should place their content. So first, for example, I'll double click into my title and just take out my title and say, um, you know, title or subtitle goes here. And then in place of my visualizations, I want to drop in layout containers, which will allow users to um, replace their visualizations with a placeholder in the dashboard. So all I have to do is drag in either a horizontal or a vertical container. And if I go to the layout menu, I can then add a border so that the user knows that the container is there. Otherwise, they won't be able to drag an item in. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and remove the worksheet that was there originally, so we're left with a placeholder for where a different worksheet can go. So I just want to show you what this could look like uh, once you're done. So this is a template that I've made from the dashboard that we've already created. And in addition to the containers, I've added text to give hints to where um, they should drop their worksheets. And I've also added something up here. So one of my favorite new features is the ability to show and hide a container. And this is really useful if you're creating a style guide, because it allows you to guide your user without having to um, create additional content or without having um, for them to go to a different location. So um, with this little button here, oops, I can click on it and then have instructions that pop up that let my user know how they should use the template. So if this is on Tableau server, it gives them instructions such as downloading um, this template workbook, telling them how to connect to their data, and then what to do after they've built their visualizations. So this is all embedded in one workbook without having to have the directions somewhere else. In my style guide workbook, I also like to include additional images or logos that they might need. So um, here I've created a second uh, dashboard that just has some other options for saved logos or images um, that would be technically approved for the corporate standard. And I should also note that you can include as many different dashboard layouts as you like. So if we go back to the idea of achieving consistency not by having something identical, but by having something uh, with a similar look and feel, this is how you can encourage dashboards that have different layouts. Lastly, I like to make um, individual templates for different kinds of analytics. And the reason behind this is that we've already seen how powerful it is to be able to copy and paste your formatting from one worksheet to another. So by making kind of um, examples of different visualizations using either dummy data or using a sample of data, it'll then be really easy for a new user to go in and copy that formatting into their visualization. So I've made one for a map, uh, a KPIs we've just seen, scatter plot, different kinds of bar charts, lines, and et cetera. So how this workbook could be used is a user would go in, connect to their data, um, create whatever analysis they want to. Then they'd open this template workbook, and they could simply copy one of the template dashboards from this workbook to their own, drop in their sheets, and then they can actually copy and paste formatting across workbooks. So they don't have to move. Um, these worksheets that have uh, different examples into their own workbook. They just have to copy and paste, and then they can refer to this for any customizations that they need to do to the marks card. Great. So the last thing that I want to talk about today is how we can actually take that corporate standard and apply it to where our users are going to consume their analytics um, and how we can make that easier for them to adopt uh, our dashboards or our reports. So we're going to talk about this for three different uh, methods or mediums. One is using Tableau Server. So when you're using a native server interface, how can you uh, make it more in line with your corporate standard? The second is if you're using a custom portal in your organization. And the third would be if you have a third-party application. So starting out with Tableau Server, I think one of the most important things is figuring out how best you want to organize your content. So we're going to see how this looks like in a minute. But one way that I've thought about this uh, for DGR as an example is to have kind of three separate groups of users. So one of them would be those viewers, so people who are going into our server and they're just consuming workbooks. 
So this would be someone that just has access to a production folder on our Tableau server where they see all of the reports they need to. Oops. The second would be for those administrators um, or creators, so people who are kind of responsible as the owners of the corporate standard. Um, so it could be one individual or it could be a group of individuals, and it's up to them to decide which content that currently would exist in a sandbox project can be moved into a production project. And the third would be um, those creators or explorers which would be making new content. So those would be the ones that would need access to our template workbook to be able to create new content either on desktop or in the browser. You can also customize your Tableau server uh, using TSM Customize. And again, we're going to see what this looks like in a minute. There's some elements of the Tableau server that can be customized and some that can't. Um, but it's really important to think about which elements you can add that would customize your Tableau server. Because again, it's all about making sure that your user feels like they're accessing something that's trusted as part of their organization. I'll get to that in a minute. So let's have a look at our server and what this looks like. Ah, don't look at that yet. It was a preview. Um, OK, so uh, here I have the Tableau server for the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. And the first thing that I see on my home page is my logo. So I already know that I'm accessing the right site. I can go in and enter my credentials. They've been very kind to give me access to their Tableau server. And I have my three workbooks here. So if I were an end user and I just wanted to see my analytics, I could go into uh, my approved dashboards and have a look at them there. I can also, um, if I were an administrator, go into my sandbox and see if any dashboards that someone has published there are meeting our criteria. If they're not, you can add a comment to the creator and say, you know, hey, you've, you haven't used the right images or you're not using the right text, can you change it? But if the dashboard is ready to be moved into the production folder, then the administrator can go in and move it from the sandbox project into the production project. And finally, we have that template. So it's something that we've created in desktop and then published to this project. And what's great is that as an explorer, or as a creator, um, if you just want to create something new on the fly in your browser, you can still have something that has part of that branded look and feel for your organization. So I can just click on this template edit it directly in the browser, and either connecting to new data or connecting to data already on our server, create new content, and then save it as a new workbook. All right. So you might have seen this in the, I think it was in the Devs on Stage keynote yesterday, but we've also introduced a lot of new tools that make it easier to manage your content on your Tableau server. So we just saw what it would look like if we were at a relatively small organization where maybe only one person has to go in and move content, and there's probably not many workbooks that are coming in every week. But if you work somewhere where we have a lot more content being generated, you might want to think about using um, uh, some of our content promotion tools to do that rather than having to do it one by one. So with content migration, you could go in and select a bunch of workbooks that you've already reviewed to see if they match your corporate standard and then move them into the production folders. You can also do this based on a rule-based selection. So let's say you've already gone into the server and you've added a tag such as approved to all of the workbooks that you've already viewed and see that they match your corporate standard. Then you can apply a rule-based selection to these to say you want to move them to your production environment. The third thing that I think is really great is that you can actually apply workbook transformations to a group of workbooks. So let's say that either your uh, company's logo has changed or your font has changed or you want to make a change to your corporate standard. Um, you can now do this in batch functions rather than having to go back uh, and redo every single one of your dashboards from scratch. So you can say, I want to replace or remove an image. Um, I want to replace a text, things like that. All right, the second way that I want to talk about how we would consume our corporate standard is if our company uses a portal. So this is um, if your organization uses, for example, an employee page, or if you wanted to set up one that would be for consuming analytics. And the reason that this is great when you've created your branded look and feel is that it makes the analytics feel seamless with something that a user is already going to to get other information. So unfortunately, you've already seen a little preview of this, so it's not a reveal. 
Um, but we have here our uh, portal for Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. And this is uh, Gaz's page. So here he has all his information, right? He has um, some pictures that people have posted. He has um, an appointment for a mustache trim today at 3 p.m. So he has to make sure that he gets to that on time. Um, and he has a friend request for me, which obviously he should decline because I don't work at his company. And he also has something in the corner here, which I'll just make it easier to see, called analytics. So if Gaz were to click on his analytics page in his portal, then automatically he will be able to see um, those dashboards that we've just created as part of our design. So here we have one um, that we've already done together. But he can click through this menu and see other dashboards that have been created on different topics. And these are live and interactive. And then he can also apply some functions to them. So just like in Tableau Server, he can either export these as a PDF, download the data, um, or save the image. So just by clicking on one of these buttons, he's been able to perform the same functions that he would have been able to do on Tableau Server. All of this is made possible by using uh, the JavaScript API and just basic HTML. So if you thought that I was bad at art, or if you believe me when I say I'm bad at art, I'm even worse at anything to do with programming. And when my friend told me um, that it was really easy to create one of these portals, I didn't believe them at all, but I thought I should try it. Um, and I want you to know that in case you didn't know that this was a, a secret, programming in HTML is pretty much just copy and pasting. So uh, you do not need to feel intimidated at all about trying this out for yourself. Uh, if I can do it, anyone can. And um, to prove this to you, I'm going to do this live. So uh, we have here, if you just Google Tableau JavaScript API and basic embed, um, they start you out with your first kind of sample of what an embedding um, a dashboard can look like. So as I said, copy paste, the most important thing you need. I'm going to go ahead and select all of this code on this page and copy it and open a text file and paste it. So just to kind of talk you through a little bit of what we're seeing here, um, the first part of the script here is calling out to the JavaScript API. And in this case, it's one for Tableau Public. So you would change this to your local server if you're pointing um, to a visualization that's hosted on your server. Otherwise, if you want to practice with a Tableau Public viz, you can leave it like this. And then here we're saying that we want to um, create a container that's going to have our visualization, and then um, giving the HTML page the link to the con uh, sorry the link to the visualization. So this is the one that was in the example, which was the Storms workbook. Um, but I'm going to go back into my Tableau Public page where I have that viz already saved, and grab the link here. All right, so copy that and paste it here. And so that you know I'm doing this for real, we're going to change the title of our page. So I'll make this, um, what time is it? 1.24 or 1 PM at Tableau Conference. And then we're just going to need to save it. So we're not going to do any of those uh, buttons for now, just an example of what the simple embedding could look like. C19. All right, here's the part where I pray that it works. So <laughs> if I double click on that, there we go. The images have disappeared. Um, but that just goes to show you, you basically need no coding or scripting or programming skills to be able to embed uh, your first tableau visualization. Thank you. Thanks. I just assume you're all asleep, so that's cool. Thank you. Um, so as we've already seen, uh, we went to kind of the analytics page in our portal. Um, and just to break this down a little bit, what we've done just now is create that container that we put our visualization in. So that's what we see in this red box here. And everything that was in the right that was a button is a function that we're calling in JavaScript to say, um, this button that we're writing in HTML is now going to talk to the visualization uh, with functions that uh, the JavaScript API already knows how to use. So there's a function for being able to export, to download. And you can do a lot with this. You can filter as well so that you can build your own um, custom filters outside of Tableau that will still be able to interact with the visualization. 
The third option that I had mentioned before was the ability to use a third-party application. I think this is going to um, you know, gain a lot of attention now with Salesforce. But the idea behind this is that you have users in your organization that are already going to another application to get information. So in the case of Salesforce, it could be you know, information on a contact or an opportunity. And it's much more powerful to bring your analytics somewhere that people are already going to get information than it is to have to drive them to a new location like your Tableau server. So this is just an example of what the Movember page would look like um, in Salesforce with an embedded Tableau Viz in it. And this is something we can already do today, so it's not a new functionality with Salesforce and Tableau. And just to prove to you that this is actually this actually works. Um, here at Tableau, we have our own Salesforce instance and we have our own Tableau server. Um, and I pulled this view to show that the number one visualization that we have on our Tableau server uh, in the last 12 months by number of views is the visualization that's actually embedded in Salesforce. So this is uh, something that you can do at your organization, which is to track which visualizations are actually being used and you can use that to then test and see, OK, if I take something and embed it somewhere else, am I getting more traction with my analytics than it would be um, if I accessed it directly on the server? So after I made the dashboard for uh, my husband, Gaz, and he was obviously wowed and was like, oh, this is great, um, he took it and was able to create his own uh, dashboards from this. So ones that were slightly different um, and had different analytics, potentially different color schemes. I don't know how I did that. Oh, not good with clickers. Sorry. There we go. Um, yeah, ones that didn't necessarily all look exactly the same, but ones that all still had the same um, branded look and feel. So after today's session, I want you to think about ways that you can take uh, ideas from this and make it your own. Um, but I want you to think and remember that you're not alone in doing this, and you have access to the Tableau community, which is your greatest resource. So I wanted to share a couple of examples that you can then refer to after today's session about how real organizations have done this. Uh, the first is the BBC. Um, so what the BBC have done is create their own style guide that they've published to their site. And I think this is a great example because uh, a news agency probably has one of the most important jobs in making sure that the data that they're sharing is trusted as part of their brand and is something that their end users have confidence in. So their style guide is really important to them and to making sure that all of their analytics uh, follows the kind of BBC um, look and feel. And if you read this, there's some things that I think sound familiar to you. So uh, they talk about kind of three main things that they want out of their style guide. The first is to have a consistent user experience. So they want all of the visualizations to be really accessible to their audiences, because they're not all you know, data savvy audiences, um, and for them to be easy and intuitive. The second is that they want their data visualizations to be able to communicate effectively, um, so have a really clear narrative. And the third, um, that they have a visual language that's a mark of quality. And for them, that's all about being recognizable as part of the BBC brand. A second example I have also comes from our community, and it was shared with me by someone at Dyson, uh, which is a company in the UK that used Tableau. Um, and they've actually iterated on even another example in the community, which comes from JLL. So you can see how people start to kind of build off what um, other companies are doing. And hopefully that kind of inspires you to do this for your own organization. But again, they have three things that they want to prioritize in their own style guide. So for them, the three things that they've identified are having a good team identity, reducing effort, so using kind of those templates and style guides um, to make it much quicker and easier to be creating content. And again, consistency, so making sure that dashboards are familiar. OK, so to recap what we've done today, first we looked at how to quickly and easily design a corporate standard or a branded dashboard in Tableau Desktop. Then we were able to take this and learn how to make it repeatable and easy to use by anyone in your organization. And finally, we talked about adoption. So I have some uh, frequently asked questions that I'm kind of expecting from the audience. One is, do you have any more examples? So it's the last day of conference, and um, hopefully we've already gone to sessions that discuss this. Um, but one that I thought would be really useful for those that are interested in what we did in the third uh, part of the session would be this uh, session that already happened on branded analytics, so embedding a better user experience. Did anyone go to this? 
one, maybe? OK, well, if not, you can um, watch it all online. So I definitely recommend this session. Um, the second question kind of related to that is you, miss, you might have missed some things. So how do you see this session again? Well, all of the sessions at Tableau have been recorded, and they will be made available to you after the conference. Um, third, really important question. So what kind of mustache will my husband, Gaz, grow uh, this November season? I want to take a quick poll. Um, he's told me I have to text him right away to know the decision. Um, so just a hands up for like a Tom Selleck mustache. OK, very few. Great. Um, <laughs> that's good for me. Uh, Henry Cavill, the guy in the middle. Oh, yes, popular. OK, I like that. Jamie Foxx, anyone? OK, all right. So that's a, I mean, if he can look like that at the end of November, I'll be, I'll be really happy. Um, <laughs> All right, uh, the last question you might have is how you can leave me feedback. So I'm sure you're, you're seasoned experts by now since it's Friday of the conference, but please do complete your evaluation in the TC app. Um, I think they're also offering a free ticket to TC next year for people that um, fill in the surveys, so that's your incentive. Um, thank you so much. I'm, besides being bad at art and bad at coding, I'm also bad at reading time, so I have to run to a flight. Um, but if you have any questions, um, you are totally welcome to email me or find me on LinkedIn. Um, I promise I will respond. And if you want to walk and talk, I'm happy to take questions on my way to the parking lot. Thank you.